Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at somebody who claims that they are now healthier than they were when they were thinner, even though they are 5'3 and 200 pounds. Why do they think that they are healthier now? Because of their blood work. Once again, my labs, my blood came back good, blah, 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 blah. So a lot of people didn't like the Dr. Phil episode. <laughs> I got the most negative comments on that video that I've ever got in any video. It's it's kind of mind-boggling, man. I guess not everybody else loves Dr. Phil as much as I do. Bunch of haters, man. Y'all are a bunch of haters, man. It's okay. I still love you. I still love you. <laughs> Let's look at these dogs. Why don't I introduce you to my dogs again? This right here is Rocco. He's a good boy for the most part except when he pees and poops on the floor sometimes. But he's getting pretty old now, so you know, you can't be too enraged at him. Yeah, yeah, I can. I'll be as enraged as I want. Look, he wants to escape. <laughs> Why are you running away? Why are you acting like you don't want me to hold you like this? <laughs> and then we've got Lily here. She's a soft alophagus. They love it when you kiss them on the face repeatedly until it gets annoying. They love that. In order to ready myself for these clips, I must first apply comb to mustache. The caption says, I gained 100 pounds this year, and I just got my best blood panel ever. Okay, what does that tell you about blood panels, huh? It takes quite a while for your body to be in such a poor state that it starts to affect your blood, just saying. So I am well over 200 pounds and I am five foot three. I believe the O word to be a derogatory term, so I- The O word is a derogatory term. She literally just said the O word instead of obese. Are we gonna start considering all science words to be derogatory because they're too based in reality? Is that what this is? I consider the G word to be a derogatory term. What term is that? Gravity, gravity, that, that's derogatory, man. I consider the D word to be derogatory. What word is that? Dwarfism. A medical term that is used for people with a certain medical condition. That's derogatory now. Okie doke. I'm not going to use it, but I will most certainly fall under the O category based upon my BMI category. Dude, referring to it by the O word is silliness. It still means what it means. You can try to disconnect from reality all you'd like. Look at this smug look of self-importance she has on her face right here. She's like, yes, that's right, you fools. I am a professional. By the way, I went to go look for her TikTok to find more of these videos because this one is such a banger, but it like it's not there anymore. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm sure you can guess how I feel about the BMI. And anyone you love the BMI. You find it to be an accurate representation of things that are based in reality, don't you? I knew you did. Anyone else who falls in the same BMI category as I do will know firsthand that the medical profession and like the world at large loves to throw themselves into an absolute tizzy over our health. What a bunch of silliness. We should not care about our health at all, right? Who needs a body or a functioning mind? They're very concerned about our health. I don't know if I would say that random strangers are concerned about your health at all. They're just concerned about this thing called reality. So when you go out there proclaiming a bunch of wacky stuff, some of us would like to counter it with actual facts and truth. I'll say this. I, as a fat person, do not owe you my health. Nobody said that you did. But when you go around making ridiculous claims like, I'm in better health now that I'm 100 pounds heavier, uh, somebody needs to step up and be like, eh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Nobody owes you their health. Yeah, that's a common misconception that narcissists have, that when people disagree with you, it's some sort of personal attack on you because you think you're the center of the universe. I fail to realize how you can deny that gravity exists while also claiming to be the center of the universe. And health looks different for every person. No, it doesn't. Health looks like me. 100% of the time, just me. If you don't have a shaved head and look exactly like me, you lack health, my friend. This is obvious sarcasm. But for those of y'all who are conflating thinness with health, riddle me this. 
Riddle me this, Batman. All right, go. Go then. Stop stopping. I am up 94 pounds. I know this because I was just at my doctor's office and they weighed me. <gasps> Those fat phobic SOBs. Why did you allow that? Why didn't you weigh backwards? From my lowest weight, you know, a year and a bit ago. And I In a year, you gained 93 pounds. Anything you want to talk about? Anything going on in your life? Uh, gaining 94 pounds in a year is a bunch, dude. That is over seven and a half pounds per month. It's interesting because this person has the phrase therapist in their TikTok name. It seems like almost every other person on TikTok is some sort of counselor, coach, therapist. It's almost like the phrase doesn't really mean anything anymore and getting a degree in something doesn't make you an expert in it at all. It just means you paid the money and you went and did your time. My checkup this year, I got a blood panel that my primary care physician has called pristine. Pristine, okay. And what does this blood panel measure? Does it measure hypertension? Did they measure the amount of sugar in your blood? One of the best she's seen in a long time. One of the best she's seen in a long time. Her doctor is like, yo, you gotta tell me your secret. This is the most beautiful blood work that I have ever seen. I'm gonna frame this bad boy and hang it up in my office as a beacon of achievement for others to emulate. Well, I have been eating a lot of cake and stuff. You know, I don't mean to brag, but uh, yeah. I did gain over seven and a half pounds per month for the past year. It's not easy. It's not always easy, you know, but I like to be an example for others to emulate. Will you please autograph this blood work? This is a big deal because never once in my entire life have I received blood work back where there wasn't something at least mildly concerning, like a vitamin deficiency at least. Okay, how many flights of stairs can you walk up before you get winded? How difficult is it to bend over and tie your shoe? Does the chafing in various parts of your body feel good? I think it's bizarre to completely discount all of the reality of the situation of being like 94 pounds overweight just because they said the blood work was good. You come into the doctor's office all huffing and puffing just from walking five feet. You're like, My labs, they look really good. Like, Dude, come on, man. There are likely numerous factors that play into this, but probably one of the most prominent is the fact that the way that I chose to go about losing weight was supremely unhealthy. Okay, then what is the point of this entire video, homie? So when you lost weight before, it was in an unhealthy way. Therefore, your blood work was no good. Now you've gained 94 pounds and your blood work is, quote, pristine. What does that say about the validity of blood work to determine how healthy you currently are? You know, to the casual observer, that might mean that uh, blood work doesn't really mean anything, doesn't really matter that much. Or perhaps stuff doesn't start showing up in your blood as being off balance or wrong until it's like pretty much too late. It takes quite a while to see all the problems in your blood. You know, I feel like crap. I can't walk for five minutes without huffing and puffing. I can't do a single push-up, pull-up, or a sit-up. But my urine analysis just came back, and there's no crack in my system at all. So, good to go. I guess. And yet, when I was 100 pounds thinner, everybody told me how much healthier I looked. Oh, that's interesting. Were you able to jog? I bet when you were 100 pounds lighter, you could go up and down the stairs like it was nobody's business. And how they can tell that I'm so much healthier. Right, but then the blood work came back and said you were a little low on vitamin C. <laughs> and you just paid attention to that one thing. And you're like, huh, vitamin C a little low. Therefore, being thin is unhealthy. Okie dokie. And that I feel so much better. But the numbers don't lie. The numbers are completely meaningless, apparently. Um, yeah, that's what I would get from this. I'd be like, but duck, I can't breathe. Like, I, I know you can't breathe or walk or anything, but your blood is looking pretty sweet. And uh, what about the heart that pumps that blood through your body? How's that looking? Did you get an EKG too? There's that smug look on her face again. The numbers don't lie. Obesity equals health. I'm healthier now than I have ever been. Just because you were a little low in vitamin C or something before uh, doesn't mean you're healthier now. Go jog a mile for me. Where are my congratulations? Congratulations for what? 
for gaining weight? This is some very diluted thinking. Do you want a ticker tape parade and a round of applause because you gained 94 pounds in one year? The average person would see that as some sort of problem. Like, yo, what went wrong, dude? Why are you gaining weight at such a rapid pace? Like, what's going on in your life? You didn't gain that much weight from doing healthy stuff where you're out there beating your PRs, like lifting heavier amounts of weight than ever before and bulking up by eating all this nutritious food. Uh, Where's my congratulations for nourishing my body? <laughs> oh God, back to that phrase, nourishing my body. When you're eating a bunch of junk food and stuff and then you expect a round of applause, what? What, is nobody else gonna clap? I guess I'm gonna have to start the slow clap that slowly builds into a roaring applause. Anybody gonna join me? I ate a bunch of cupcakes. Anybody? Anybody? Yo, hey guys, I just ate whatever I wanted and I did not exercise at all. What's, where's the applause? Where are you? I believe in you. I'm gonna get you a cake that says 94 pounds in one year. Congrats. And then we're all gonna surprise you with it. You're gonna come in through the door and we're like, surprise! And you're gonna be like, what's the occasion? And we're like, you gained a bunch of weight, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. Maybe if you had like a restrictive ED prior to that and you were down to unhealthily low weights, then you might get a round of applause for gaining 94 pounds. I could see that as being like the only scenario in which that would happen. The only other scenario in which that would happen would be uh, during a dream, perhaps a REM sleep. For no longer punishing myself. You were punishing yourself by getting down to a lesser weight. You never said that you were in dangerously low weight territory. You said that you're 5'3", and that you gained 94 pounds in the past year. And before that, uh, your blood panels weren't that great. Okay, well, who cares? <laughs> who cares about your blood panel, dude? I am fat, healthy, moisturized, and well-fed, baby. All right, well, you didn't tell me you were moisturized before. I take back everything I said. That, uh, you are the epitome of health now. <laughs> Oh, lordy, 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 what are we doing? Help me, Rhonda, help me. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at another clip that's completely unrelated, and it's not by the same person. Like I said, I tried to find more videos from that person we just watched, because that was such a hot take, um, but I couldn't find their account. I, I typed it in, I searched it up, I, I like did a lot of investigative journalism to try to uncover their TikTok account, and I just couldn't find it. So let's take a look at the next unrelated clip. The pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream, and it's about a thousand calories for the pint. And anybody I know can finish this. These kind of health swaps are the exact reason why so many people have a fucking horrendous relationship with food. Okay, so the girl that she's responding to was saying like, yo, I know people that could eat this 1,000 calorie pint of Ben and Jerry's in one sitting. I'm guessing she's saying, that's why I don't keep it in the house, because if it's not in the house, I can't eat it. And then this person who keeps on slamming their hand into the table because their points are so valid um, is having a problem with that. She's got a better way than just not bringing it into the house, apparently. Let's go. I know so many people that are like, I can't even keep a pint of ice cream in my house because I know I'm just going to destroy the whole thing. Yeah, I would say that's a very valid point. Um, if you have a problem eating this kind of stuff and you can't just moderate it because it's highly addictive and delicious, uh, then just don't keep it in the house. I agree with those people. I know people that have asked other people that live with them to literally hide food so they can't find it because if they do, they're gonna destroy the whole bag. Yeah, like I said, if it's not there, you can't eat it, right? Let me tell you this. The answer to feeling so out of control around food where you literally have to ask people to go hide it, you have to throw it in the garbage, you have to pour ketchup on it in the garbage, you have to not even keep it in your house, is that more rules and being more food avoidant makes you more food obsessed. No, it doesn't. So if I don't keep ice cream in my house, I will be obsessed with ice cream somehow. That's weird because like when it's not in your house, it's just not even on your mind, right? I didn't get it from the store. I didn't put it in my house. Uh, if I felt like going into the other room and destroying a pint of Ben and Jerry's, um, the option wouldn't be there. Actually, uh, that doesn't make you obsessed at all. That's not gonna make you more obsessed with ice cream. You're gonna go find something else to do. This is very similar to that mind state where you're like, if I don't eat a bunch of processed food, I will become obsessed with it, and then I will find it and go completely off the rails. No, that's not how that works. 
Like any other chemical addiction, the longer you go without eating it or doing it, the easier it becomes to not eat it or do it. As it gets out of your system and your gut microbiome goes back to the way that it should be and stops craving all this chemical nonsense. I have had the same ice cream in my freezer for maybe three weeks and I- Okay, that's you, homie. Then why are you trying to give advice to people who suffer from like binge eating or struggling to control how much they eat of ice cream? If you can have it in your freezer for three weeks or whatever and it's fine, good on you, mate. But uh, that doesn't mean that that's relevant for everyone else. So you should, probably shouldn't be giving them advice either. I literally forgot about it until I made this video. Okay, congratulations. The rest of us aren't like that. For some people, having addictive substances in their house is having addictive substances in their house. So I should just keep drinking this beer continually so that I won't crave alcohol and go completely nuts. Right? That's how that works. Or you'll just keep craving more and more just because you just keep on indulging in it. The more you do of the thing that you're addicted to or you struggle with, the more you will want to do because it's never enough. You're like, eh, that got me about that high last time. Eh, I'm getting used to being this high. Or like, my liver is used to being this amount of pickled, <laughs> so I need to keep increasing it. Addictive food is like any other thing, man. You get a tolerance for it, don't you? Back when I used to eat nothing but garbage, I could consume ungodly amounts of that stuff. Now that I haven't eaten that stuff in quite a long time, when I eat it, I can only eat a little bit of it, and my body's like, ugh, all right, enough. A couple of years ago, that ice cream would have been replaced five times and I would have destroyed all of them, probably each in their own sitting. Because I avoided foods like that completely. Then how did were you able to destroy five of them in one sitting if you avoided them completely? Uh, something ain't adding up here. So you used to avoid those foods, and because you would avoid it, somehow they would end up in your house and you would destroy five of them. I guess you weren't doing a very good job avoiding it then, huh? I wouldn't really call that avoiding um, if you end up destroying five pints in one sitting. Um, sounds like the opposite of avoiding, like you bought five pints. You consciously went out and bought five of those and brought them to your house. And then you're like, you restricted yourself from eating for five minutes and then you went and ate them all. I don't understand. Now that I fully allow all foods in my diet with no restriction, I'm not obsessing about things that I buy, obsessing about treats, obsessing about food that I ate, that I will eat, that I haven't eaten. Oh, that's interesting. You have no restrictions. You'll just eat whatever, no matter how unhealthy, no matter how processed. And as a result, you eat less of these things. Dude, we've seen this hot take before and it's utter nonsense. Are you selling products? What are you trying to do here? This seems deliberately trying to hurt people. I don't obsess over food at all. Well, you know, junk food has addictive chemicals in it, and when you partake in it, it's gonna make you crave it more. Not just your brain, but your gut's microbiome, which is also known as the second brain. It can alter your behavior. When you go long enough without eating junk food and a bunch of processed chemical nonsense, you stop craving it eventually, just like any other drug. The hardest part about quitting substances is in the beginning, but after you've gone quite a while without doing them, and you no longer identify with them, you don't crave them at all, dude. I've quit a lot of substances myself. I don't crave cigarettes. I don't crave meth. I don't crave any of that crap. And when I see people partaking in those things, I'm just like, whatever, dog, you do you, man. I'm not interested. It's literally the same exact thing. Addictive substances are addictive substances. And like health swaps, I think, in and of itself are not the problem you know like if you actually enjoy that make it eat it up i don't care health swaps right so she's referencing like when you swap out something healthy that's just kind of sweet or something instead of the ben and jerry's pint maybe you have some greek yogurt with some fruit in it instead of some ben and jerry's i'd say that's a legitimate swap one is pretty healthy the other is absolute nonsense it's when you're having that health swap because of the guilt and shame of indulging or um, okay, so my reasons for swapping it out are illegitimate in your eyes. If I feel guilt and shame, and therefore I'm swapping it out, that's not legitimate. Just f***ing allowing yourself to have something just because you actually want it. Food is meant to be enjoyed. Right, we all want all kinds of horrific things, okay? That doesn't mean you get it. You don't just get whatever you want. That's part of being an adult. Part of being an adult also is using your logic to overcome your childish emotions and wants and needs and I want it, give it, it tastes good, screw the future, I only care about the now. 
people that are functioning on a higher level care more about what's going to happen down the line than just the here and now, dude. It's very short-sighted. Food is made for us to connect, to express ourselves. What? Food is made for us to connect, to express ourselves? All right, man, what is this charlatan selling? This is deliberately malevolent to try to hurt people. To experience an ecstasy of life. To experience an ecstasy of life? Why are you trying to fool all these people to tying all their emotions into their addiction? That's very bad. This is very bad. You do not have to make a f***ing health swap for every food that you personally like. Sure you can. You can do whatever you like. There has to be money involved or there, there, nobody's this deluded. This is intentional. They're intentionally trying to get you to tie your emotions of joy and stuff to this substance that you're addicted to. That's really, really, really malevolent, dude. Everybody needs to stop being all up in their emotions in general. You need to learn the lesson that the emotion had to teach and then let it go, man. There's this big push right now for everybody to be overly emotional about everything. Think about how you feel. Dwell on it. Let it amplify until it hurts you. Um, no. Let's use our logic to overcome these emotions. I felt mad, so I took a swing at the guy. Um, yeah, that's dumb. Don't do that. Use your logic to overcome. Think about, if I swing on this dude, I'm gonna go to jail, and this is gonna screw my life in a big way. Let me tell you this, the stress you have over eating the foods that you actually like is infinitely worse than the food itself. There's no stress. In fact, you'll find that you're happier when you actually stick to something. When you're like, I didn't eat the pint of Ben and Jerry's, so I just sat there and stressed about it. No, you didn't. You felt good the entire time you did not eat it. You started stressing once you caved in and actually ate it. Then you felt disappointed in yourself and you felt stressed out from that. And you're like, why did I do that? I did not want to eat that, but I did. Why didn't I do that? Why can't I stick to this? That stress is actual stress. There's no stress about sticking to something that you wanted to do. Am I sitting here stressing out about the cigarettes that I used to smoke, dude? Come on. So if you wanna do a health swap because you enjoy it, do it up. If you wanna sit down and enjoy every bite of Ben and Jerry's until it's all gone, do it up. Yeah, and then you're gonna immediately feel guilty because you didn't want to do that and you caved into your addiction again. Don't do it. You don't have to do that. You can be in control of your own mind and your own life. But you are not doing a bad thing for picking Ben and Jerry's over a volume well, you know, I feel guilty when I try and fail at anything, right? I meant to go outside today and clean the gutters, and then I just sat around on my butt all day and didn't do anything, and now I feel guilty. Uh, that guilt is legitimate. I failed at something that I wanted to do, and I was just lazy instead. Yeah, there, that's the reason there's guilt involved. Cheesecake, sugar-free, stevia smoothie. You can just eat food because you enjoy it. Yeah, and you can gain 94 pounds in one year as well from doing so. Man, I'm glad I ate all that food. I can't walk up a flight of stairs without breathing heavily, and I'm uncomfortable in my very own body 24-7. And I got the old sleep apnea for the cherry on top of this wonderful Sunday. Was it worth it? Was that five minutes of pleasure of the taste of food in your mouth worth it? It's just food, man. Oh, this tastes good. <laughs> like... Dude, get over it. Who cares? It's stupid food. The short-term pleasure of the flavor of food is not worth the long-term health consequences that it poses. And that's just such a childish mentality, too, to just be concerned with the here and now and also food. Oh, I ate all the candy. Like, a lot of people are out here acting like children, man. That's why you shouldn't give sweets to your kids. You shouldn't start this addiction off early. Your kids don't need that crap, dude. They can find something else to take joy in in life. Like, go ride a skateboard or a bike or something. You don't need to sit around and go, oh, candy, candy, give me the candy. You ever seen how crazy kids get about candy? Ah, oh, we've got a food freedom coach. Okay, so what are you selling? So we've got another thin person telling overweight people to just eat whatever they want, and they're calling themselves a food freedom coach. CSCS, CPT, CSNC, all right, so yeah, they are calling themselves a coach and giving themselves all these titles and stuff. I don't see a link tree here where they're selling products, but I can guarantee you they are. Doing the things that I feel self-conscious about. I have always been self-conscious about my arms, always. And I feel like the more I... Hmm, that's weird. This person isn't even obese. Yet they're telling you to go smash a freaking pint of Ben and Jerry's and not feel guilty about it. How about that?
Hey guys, I don't smoke, but I think you should all smoke for some reason. I don't work for RJ Reynolds or anything secretly. <laughs> Who do you work for? <laughs> That's about all we have time for today. I disagree with both of the people that we've seen in today's video. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.